Welcome to Patty's Aquatics. So today what I want to do is show you guys an outdoor breeding project I'm going to try. But to start with that, let me show you what's going on behind me. So this is the summer tub I put together, which I'll link the video up here. Um, but the reason I'm showing you this is because one, I want to show you some of the changes. I did put all this creeping Charlie all over the wood and added some more floating plants and have it draped up over the top here. But the reason I'm showing you it is because I want to show you this top tub. Now I use this tub as one of three of them that I had in my summer tubbing videos from last year, which I'll link up here as well. Now I'm showing you this because I had two other ones. And what did I do with them? Well, let's take a walk over here and I'll show you. That's right, I set another one up. Now, as you can see, there's two of them. And let's get into that. So what happened was one of them, which is this one that's on the inside, had a cracked bottom, about a five inch long crack, so I couldn't use it. In the bottom one, I tried to drill a hole in for the bulkhead for my other pond you just seen, but I screwed it up. So I thought instead of buying a new one, I wanted to do something else out here. I tried caulking the bottom of this thing. I put caulk on the crack, I put duct tape over it and caulked over that as well. Brought it outside and threw water in it and it still leaked a tiny bit. It like dropped maybe an inch overnight. So what I did was I put more caulk on it and then on this other tub here, I put sand at the bottom and then I put this on top. And then the hole is going to be hard to see. I'll try to show you weirdly this way. Was on this side. And what I did with that is I put duct tape over that and I caulked the crap out of it. Filled it up with water and it is not leaking at all. So. I think we got ourselves another summer tub and this is going to lead us to that breeding project. So I got sand in there. I've got some floating plants, some hornwort. I've got more of that creeping Charlie in there and a little bit of Java moss. So what am I going to put in here? Well, I'll show you that in a second. Um, the only thing is I'm not sure if I want to put a sponge filter in here yet for some air movement. I wanted to go all, all natural and just let it be. But it's going to get hot this summer, so I'm not sure if I really should for that water movement. It might be pretty beneficial, but we'll decide on that later. But what am I going to put in here with that breeding project? For that, we need to go downstairs in the fish room, and I can show you. All right, so we're down here in the fish room where everything, including the Oscar here, is doing great. So what are we going to put in that little tub outside? Well, it's definitely not going to be Puff Daddy. He is in a breeding project. I've already got a bunch of guppies and endlers. I don't want to put them out there because they disappear or jump out. I don't know what happened to them. Um, I have a mixture of them out there. Let's see, we could do the rainbow shiners, but they're still, I don't think, sexually matured yet. I'm not 100% sure on them. They don't have the awesome colors I was hoping for yet, but they are starting to turn a little redder, so we'll see. And this tank, I plan on doing a major upgrade on it in the near future this summer, so I'm gonna keep them in there. Um, another option, what about my Matano rice fish that are back there hiding? I mean, they are a tropical species. They probably would do okay outside, but, I really want to see if I can get them to breed in here naturally this year. If I can get their numbers to go, well, then maybe next year. So that leads us to the white cloud minnows. That's what I want to put out there. I have 10 of them in here currently. Now, the question is going to be, how many do I want to put out there? I don't want to put all 10 of them out there. I kind of want to split this up a little bit. Oh, by the way, look at that. A molt from a shrimp in the background. That's awesome. Um, so what do I want to put in there? I was thinking originally maybe one male and two females. 
I have 10 of them, but maybe I just want to go half and half, five and five. The problem is figuring out sexing on these. Now, I have a feeling these may be quarreling males right now. They both got that finage. That looks like a female. If they have the rounded belly I read, it's more female. So I kind of think I have a large amount of females compared to males. So I just want to get one male out there with at least three females and keep the rest in here. Because I've really been trying to get them to breed in here naturally. It's nice and thick vegetation, but I haven't seen babies yet. So I don't know for sure really what's going on. So that's why I want to split them up and put them outside as well to see, you know, can I get them to breed outside? And what I have been doing is when this Sylvania at the top grows very um, thick and I got to take some out along with the Matano rice fish one, I throw them in this tub over here. There's no fish in there currently. And I let it sit for a week, sort of to see if there's any eggs on any of them. And if I see anything swimming in there, I check every day. And if it don't, I take these and I put them outside or I disperse them through the tanks. But that being said, let me try pulling some of these out of here. And then I'll show you what I came up with. All right, so I think what I have here is one male and three female. We'll find out. Um, so let's get them outside in this natural sunlight and let's get them acclimated to the water temperature and we'll get them in that pond. All right, so we're outside with these guys. Let's get them in some natural light. Now the water temperature is off by a little bit. So we're just gonna take a little bit the water from the pond and throw it in here and let it sit for a minute and let's talk while these guys acclimate it's almost 70 degrees in the pond right now um it probably was it wasn't too far off downstairs i never looked to be honest with you but so i'm going to get these guys in here and i'm going to really hope that they can breed um, i think i will rig up a uh, sponge filter in the back here a little bit just slowly to get a little bit of air in here for when it does get really hot like today they're talking about 90 degrees so it's going to be one of the hotter days today and i want these guys to be able to not die and then two i'm in an area that gets the most shade out of anywhere in my backyard i get blocked from the sun from the garage here where the sun comes up this way so i got a little bit of sun now and then soon it'll be up over the top of my house and there'll be shade. Like I said, this is the shadiest area of the entire place. Now, I'm thinking about it. I could also put something in front here. Maybe go two tiers up and then put a couple more here, something longer. You know, that might be the next thing to do because I'd like to try a few more things out here. I know the wife will kill me because it's a never-ending thing of addiction of wanting to put more and more and more. She told me she didn't care where I put this as long as it was out of the way for the daughter to be able to play. So... That being said, let's give this a minute or two more, and then uh, we'll get these guys in here. All right, it's been about 15 minutes, so everything should be hunky-dory here for these guys to go in there. Again, like I said, I think I got one male and three female. We'll see. Those three have got a little bit fuller bellies where the one male, I believe, is the one that was quarreling with the other one. And, uh, yeah, so let's get them in here and see how this goes. Welcome to your summer home, guys. Give me lots and lots of babies. All right. So let's hope that this turns out great. What I'm going to do, I think, is get a little bit more vegetation in there. Um, I'm sure these plants will grow. I have a little bit of Ludwig in there. I don't know if you can see that down there. But, uh, yeah, as this grows in and gets thicker, it's just going to be more areas for them to be able to scatter eggs on. So I'll let them sit for a while, and then I'll show you some footage a little later. So I had a major disaster in this outdoor breeding project. Um, I had this video almost completely filmed, and I was doing some B-roll footage of me trying to feed these fish. And I noticed that they were not coming to the surface eating as frantically as they always did. And I didn't see any of them, to be matter of fact. I thought it was strange, but I thought maybe they're just you know, scared and sitting at the bottom until I went up top here where I overlooked my fish, which I'll show you. 
So I was looking up above here like I always do with my other ponds and I noticed down there I found the remnants of all four of my white crawl minnows all jumped out of this tub, landed in the back, dried up and were being eaten by ants and were dead. So now what? So down in the fish room as you can see, that was I don't know what the how, I don't even know how to describe it. It's very upsetting. Um, I really was looking forward to seeing those fish potentially try to breed out there this summer, and they didn't even last a full day. You know, it was later that day. Like I said, I was going to go feed them, and just seeing them laying on the the patio behind there was just like it took all the breath out of me. Like, oh, are you kidding me? So now what? What do I do now? I mean, I. I don't want to do just guppies and endlers, but those seem to be the only thing that do not jump out of those tubs for me. I mean, let me turn the camera around. I put the sword tails out there last or two years ago. They all jumped out and died. I put them, remember, I showed in this past video one male of these and two of these females. I don't see any of them anymore. So I, I don't know what to do, to be honest with you. I don't want to put my Matano rice fish out there. These guys are not ready. And like I said, I'm going to be redoing their tank. So what am I going to do? I really don't want to throw the last of these out here, of my uh, white claw minnows. Quite honestly, I think I'm going to get some more just to replenish what I lost out of here. Because um, they are cheap enough at the local fish stores. But what about outside? So, like I said, I had two females of these out there in that other pond, and I can't find them, but that doesn't mean that they're not out there because they hide very well in that vegetation. So, I'm thinking maybe I'll put a small colony of these guys out there and hope for the best, but I'm not going to just hope for the best. I kind of DIY'd and rigged something makeshift to maybe stop something from jumping out again but first let me grab some of these guys and put them in a container and we'll bring them outside because i really think the color of these guys are going to really pop outside in that natural sunlight well, well i got about five females and three males of a few different age brackets so let's see what happens let's get them out there all right, so these are them in the natural sunlight. Let's get a little bit of water in here from this one, like we did before. And then let me show you what I did. What I basically did is I got this black plastic fencing and I put air hose around it just so I can slip it over the top. Now the fish are gonna still be able to potentially jump through these holes, but they're going to have to get really lucky to be able to do that. So let's let these guys sit for a few minutes and then I'll put them in there. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes. Let's get these guys in there and hope that these work this time. Now these guys should really stick out in the sunlight, which I'm really excited about. Well, let's get this cover on there, and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so that's the cover on there. Like I said, they still could get out of here if they get lucky, but it should stop the majority of anyone trying to jump out of there. They're going to have to have a very lucky number, and if they do jump out of there, well, they won't be able to buy a lottery ticket anymore, but they should have because they would have been one of the luckiest fish in the world. So that's that. And I hope it works out this time. So I'm going to end the video here. Um, thank you very much for watching. If it's something that interests you, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And don't forget, I am offering memberships to my channel. So don't forget to hit that join button if you're interested. And that being said, always remember to think outside the box and take a step back into nature. I hope to see you next time here at Patty's Aquatics.